Welcome. Welcome to week two of MPAI 600 here at Georgetown University School of Continuing Studies. I think we had a great first week, and I look forward to to your discussion points for this, this next upcoming week. So announcements, uh, keep up the effort. This this is, I think everyone did pretty good uh, for the discussion section. I'll, I'll have those back to you early this week so you have an idea of what I'm looking for for the following weeks. But I, I think for the most part, it was, it was pretty good. Um, the problem is people tend to slack off as the semester goes on. Uh, that's just natural habit. Everyone's enthused at the beginning, but then it gets... Uh, a lot less enthused. So don't let that happen to you for this course as well as the remainder of course com- coming coming forward. Uh, please post by Thursday. Um, I know we had, again, people in and out the first week, and that's okay, but just please post on Thursday so your classmates and you have the weekend to, to interact and read each other's posts, uh, which I think is, is a vital part of the, the learning section to see, you know, is what I said concurrent with somebody else's, or, or is there ways I can improve my, my thinking going forward? I just also want to remind you, I had this question. Uh, it's 500 questions, about 500 words total. So, you know, if it's a one question, it's 500 words. If it's two questions, it's 250 words. And uh, there'll be a couple of assignments coming up where it's, it's two questions. So uh, keep that in mind going forward. And then the group project assignment, I, I broke you up into groups. Uh, you will see the rest of the as we go on, uh, but just that's important when week five comes in, and you'll see the assignment for week five. Um, when that happens, again, the half of you will be doing a presentation, a live presentation. The other half will be doing the paper, and I, I will be giving reminders to that going forward. The one thing I just ask again is that you, uh, and you've seen the assignments and the syllabus, so you you have an idea of what's going forward. But if you focus on uh, these upcoming weeks, on your discussion points and your readings and lectures especially, uh, you'll do fine on your your group assignments and your papers. So just focus kind of on the day-to-day tasks and and they'll lead up to, to that assignment the following week or week five. So current events. Um, just like you guys provided current events for this week, uh, I want to use this forum to provide my own current events. Um, and obviously what's dominating is the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, first, I just want to say, again, if you're involved in the COVID-19, either uh, your family's been impacted because of health reasons, you're a first responder, we've got a couple of those in our class, uh, or otherwise your work's impacted by COVID-19, please let me know. Uh, I'm trying to be as flexible as possible for this uh, because of the extenuating circumstances uh, going on with COVID-19. So, so again, a, a note, just shoot me a note, even if you think that it might impact your work going forward, and let me know. And I also just, from my perspective, it might impact me and my ability to get some of your assignments graded on time because uh, I will be going in, uh, I telework two weeks, and then the other two weeks I'm working 12, 14 hours a day doing COVID-19 issues for the Department of Defense. So just keep that in mind uh, going forward. So review of last week, UBL crisis. Um, So UBL capture. Um, Again, the documentary covered it pretty well. um, And your readings, again, are are meant to apply what you learned to the whatever case study we're talking about. And obviously it was the UBL capture this week. And I think it's a good example of the collection cycle working and then the, the different intelligence disciplines working. Um, many of you probably, some of you might have heard the intelligence disciplines, might be very familiar with them. Others of you prob- might be just learning them for the first time. What I want you to just take away is not just one discipline worked, and a lot of you highlighted that in your discussion, that it was the cross queuing of disciplines that led to this ultimate success. Um, and again, in the signals intelligence, it was the uh, well, first, really, the human intelligence, which was the interrogation of Asangul, which led to the courier. Um, the courier's signals intelligence intercepts from Kuwait City allowed them to pinpoint a location for Osama bin Laden. 
and the geoint allowed them to actually surveil the location, determine it was four families living there, which aligned with what we knew about the four wives of Osama bin Laden, and that eventually, and that allowed uh, the raid to occur, or at least enough confirmation that it could be bin Laden, which allowed the raid to go forward. This is a great case study on how the different intelligence arms cooperated to yield a specific success. Um, we will go into detail later on failure and where the failures occur uh, in the in the intelligence cycle and within these these different intelligence disciplines. Um, and then I, I talked personally in, in my lectures, and the Lowenthal alluded to it, uh, with the intelligence cycle. There's a traditional one that's taught in the schools. Then there's what I have when you're talking about uh, the interface among policymakers and and uh, intelligence personnel, um, and we'll talk about that in detail. So that was the UBL chapter. I think everyone did a pretty good job for week two. I want you also to state to I want to take a step back here. Uh, what I meant to also talk about with the COVID nineteen crisis is what you see going on in the COVID-19 world, and there was just an article in the New York Times yesterday about it, is definitely applicable to the assignments that you have here. You know, we're going to talk, a big part of our class is going to talk about intelligence driving risk reduction and when are reasonable risk reduction measures going to take in place. I see in the in the New York Times about, uh, you know, the, did the president know this? Did the president know that? And I don't want to get political here, but we have to ask with, with scrutiny, when was there enough information that decisions could have been made to mitigate the risk and what decisions could have been made? Um, and I, I just for example, in January, if you're getting shadowy intelligence about this potential virus occurring in China, um, that's not enough information to shut down the entire economy back in January. That is not a reasonable analysis going forward. So what could have been done, if anything, back in January? What could have been done in February when we had a clear picture of what was going on? Um, was, were there reasonable risk reduction measures that could have been implemented then? And that's the whole point. That is a huge theme in our class, whether it's uh, the, the COVID-19 crisis, whether you're you're working a cybersecurity issue in your in your business unit, whether you're working some of these national level intelligence issues re regarding North Korea, uh, terrorism, what where can intelligence drive reasonable decisions going forward? And I ask for your analysis in that in the case studies that we're going to talk about uh, going forward. Um, and again, that theme is going to come up over and over and over again. So pay attention to what you see in the news uh, and, and bring it back to what we're seeing in this course. So week two, um, collection strategies. You all will be doing collection strategies. Uh, I have sent an example collection strategy with this announcement. So go ahead, pause me and watch that. Okay, so welcome back. From there, you have an idea of what I'm looking for. I talk a little bit more in this week's lecture as well, so you'll have an idea. And again, I want you to be creative here. Put pen to paper, use the intelligence process, use the intelligence ints, and apply it to a certain scenario. Um, you have the option of using the UBL scenario if you want, uh, but you could also use options from your, your work, from your business, from your interests. Um, don't go back in history too much, but you know, think of what what are issues facing us, and that could be everything from uh, issues surrounding gangs, MS-13, right wing extremists, North Korea, uh, COVID-19. Uh, these are all problems, national or problems in our law enforcement, and national security field that um, have an intelligence under uh, underpinning to that, and I want you to explore that in detail. So again, you're going to develop requirements, apply intelligence disciplines to those requirements, analyze pitfalls in the collection cycle, be creative. Again, uh, don't get paralyzed with analysis here. Just kind of put pen to paper uh, and come through with, with kind of these, these steps that I talk about here. And you'll see more detail in the, 
in the lectures coming up this next week. So the readings, uh, Lowenthal chapter 6, uh, and then the second part is the Intelligence Tradecraft Primer, um, and that talks about, and I'll go into detail on um, intelligence pitfalls, analytical pitfalls people make when assessing not just intelligence, but areas where you don't have a full information, full information out there. Um, the documentary is the PBS Frontline, The Confessions. Um, what I want you to do is take the issues re relying regarding the intelligence tradecraft primer, which we'll talk about groupthink and confirmation bias and vividness bias, and apply it to the documentary. I, I can't emphasize that enough. You will not get full credit in your discussion if you can't take the, the, the data presented in the readings and apply it to the case study. So please cite specifically where you see issues coming up when you watch a documentary, The Confessions. Again, it's great, great, great flick, a classic example of, of some of these, maybe not a classic example, but a, a relevant example of where people were railroaded. They lost essentially a good portion of their lives because uh, of law enforcement having these biases that I, I discussed earlier. So uh, if there's questions or issues, let me know. And I look forward to this week's discussion.